Well, good morning. It's Richard Finley from David Walters Yachts. I'm here in French St. Martin and I'm aboard Bunefoy, a very beautiful 2008 um, 62 foot Halberg Grassy sailing vessel. This is a gorgeous boat that's been very well maintained uh, throughout its life. It's extremely well outfitted and it's got more accessories and cool gadgets than you can possibly imagine. So we're going to take a real good look. Um, sorry about the wind. That's the nature of the place, uh, the tropics. The wind noise on this day became unbearable, so I've decided to do a voiceover of the deck tour. Starting at the rear of the vessel, we begin to see a theme that's repeated throughout this boat, and that's the scale of things. You see these davits. It's hard to tell in the camera the true size, but these davits are massive stainless steel structures that will hold a very large tender. And the tender that comes with the vessel is of a generous size with a 25 horsepower four-stroke outboard. There's also, for good measure, a spare four-stroke Honda outboard aboard the vessel. Up here is an impressive cluster of electronics. Radar, GPS antennas, satellite phone antennas. And down on the bottom there is one of three cameras on the boat that are integrated into the chart plotters. Something that I've always loved about center cockpit boats is what I think of as the sort of back porch, and this one is really quite massive. Not only does it have these huge big lazarette lockers for fenders and lines and all of that stuff, but of an evening, a beautiful evening as it is here pretty well daily, I love the idea of sitting out here in a deck chair and having a glass of rosé looking back at the sunset. There's room here, room here. Note the gigantic hatch to let air into the main cabin, the owner's cabin right downstairs. So speaking of this idea of scale, you can see the turning blocks for the spinnaker here are just massive. The hinges are heavy duty, the stainless support for the electronics, the railings are all oversized and massive. Even if you look at the stainless steel frame for the Bimini, once again it's all oversized. When you see an inch or an inch and a quarter on other boats, this one is like an inch and a half, very dense stainless tubing and heavier fixtures for the Bimini and the Dodger. We'll note over here that there was a wee accident with that hard Dodger window. By the time this video goes live, it will have been replaced. One interesting feature about this boat is what the manufacturer describes as push-button sailing. We'll talk about that more as we tour the boat, but everything that you want to do to control this vessel while underway, from jibs in and out, mainsail in and out, windlass thruster, is all done push-button from the helm position up here. This is a great convenient way of managing it, appropriate to a vessel of this size and sophistication. It also makes it so easy for a couple, and these boats of course are designed for a couple of them to operate. You'll also notice that there's always been covers for nearly everything on the boat since it was new. Back here the winches are covered up with these nicely made covers, but I took one off over there so you can later see the mint condition of the drum and the caps of that winch. We'll also see the massive size of the winches to manage a very large Genoa. Once again we're talking about massive, but it's a 77 Lumar electric winch. Now moving forward, we see more massive stuff, but we also see a pretty interesting solar installation. Solar is one of my interests as a live aboard. I'm pretty keen on solar installations on sailboats. This one is pretty impressive, the engineering of it. They've managed to fit eight 180 watt panels. Well, doing a quick bit of math, that's 1,440 watts, which for a monohull is really way up there. The owner finds that if they're just a little bit cautious in the use of water and the use of power that they rarely have to run the generator to top up the batteries on this vessel. That's kind of nice. It's, it's a nicer way to live rather than listening to the diesel. We've got over here a nearly brand new six-person Plastimo life raft. More solar obviously over there on the other side. But here you begin to see more of this push-button sailing equipment hydraulic motors for in and out of the mainsail, hydraulic line going up and back there for the outhaul. Oh yes, a brand new boom kicker here as well. Once again about this massiveness, the size of the rod ricking wires are just brutally huge. The uppers are the size of my thumb and I'm no small fella. And once more talking about size, the spar the mast is just this massive big thing. Let's see if we can get a nice tilt up here to get a sense of the scale of the rig. She's just about 26 meters or 87 feet tall and the cross section once again is just huge.
another facet of this massiveness to talk about, and there, there, there's quite a lot of boat traffic here on this Sunday morning in the lagoon here in St. Martin, a lot of day boats, but on Sunday the local residents get their big center consoles out and run around and have a good time. So today on this Sunday, there's a lot of wake action here, and this boat is substantial enough that you can barely get much of a sense of movement at all. So it's a very comfortable platform on which to live. See again these oversized hatches letting in a lot of light and a lot of air. But interesting to bring up again the notion of covers for everything. There's been covers on all the hatches since the boat was first built. With these covers and the heavy curtains inside in the salon, all the woodwork inside, and we'll see that later, all the woodwork inside is very, very new, immaculate really, as a result. Most of it looks like it's just straight out of the factory, so it's kind of really remarkable for a boat that's actually about 15 years old. It's very hard to tell inside. She looks like she just came out of the factory. Here again, speaking of massive, we got great huge bow pulpit and within these gorgeous hydraulic drive furlers for the Genoa furler and the Cutter furler. We also have, while we're up there, this beautifully made bow spread for running your Jenniker, ASIM, or Code Zero. Turning around here, without making you guys too dizzy. You can look back on the whole vessel and get a sense of the size and the scale. Yeah, she's a big girl. Just behind the door aids there, you see an uncommon looking stainless rack. With these solar mounts, they can be tilted down to catch more light in the day or for short journeying. But if you're really going into the nasty stuff, they go in this rack, this custom rack, with tie downs to keep them totally secure. I keep being struck and keep talking about the scale of things. Look, this spinnaker pole, you can't, again, can't tell the size from the camera, I'm sure, but once again, I'm a big guy and the pole dwarfs the size of my hands or my arm. Here's some more big, impressive, beautiful fittings. The stainless steel gooseneck is like a nautical work of art. We've also got these almost kind of cute conventional winches here to assist in everything along with the hydraulic stuff. These winches seem normal in size for those of us who sail on, live on, or live on more typical boats. Here's your hydraulic lines, nice and tidy, leading up to the mast. There's that Plastimo life raft again, a boarding ladder, I guess, for the tender. I kind of like this idea of the Bimini and the Dodger, or rather the Dodger and the Bimini being really separate structures. This lets a lot of air get through the slot here into the cockpit. One thing the owner mentioned, and you can see it in the photographs, you'll see a Pfeiffer Tex curtain that hangs at the back of the cockpit. They have an interesting effect happening on this one. In combination with the slot we just mentioned, not only does this curtain keep the afternoon sun out, it makes the air bounce off and flow down in the companionway into the salon, keeping it a little cooler. Kind of a nice byproduct. The main use was the shade, but it ended up just being an interesting bit of aerodynamics. Here's that absolutely mint size 77 electric winch, more close up and you get, you've got no sense of scale through the camera at all, but here's my hand, and once again, I am a big dude. So there's the exterior of the boat. Oh, one final thing I can say is, look at the size of the cockpit. Easily 10 people can sit here comfortably late in the afternoon or into the evening and have a beverage and a little chit-chat, but it's even for two or three on passage with lots of room to stretch out and nap while underway. Oh, and one more little sidebar. These Weber Q grills are the thing to get. All those stainless steel marine grills don't seem to last all that long and don't work all that well to begin with, but these Weber barbecues are great. I've got one on my boat. Befitting a boat of this size is this glorious, large, and very comfortable cockpit. The cushions are squishy and comfortable and in beautiful condition. Again, the sun's been kept off this boat quite a lot, so everything is much newer looking than you'd expect from a boat of this age. 
Here's the sort of command center of the boat, the center of the push button sailing. On here is anchor winch, main sheet, outhaul, genoa, cutter sail. All done hydraulically or electrically from here. Big and beautiful wheel. This is obviously, as you can see, being covered up as it's also very fresh looking. As we go forward, we see a feature from Halberg that I've always admired, these beautifully varnished shelf kind of areas on either side of the companionway. The woodwork on these boats has always been spectacular and has always impressed me so much. Speaking of impressive, here is probably the biggest chart plotter I have ever seen in the wild. This great big garment unit and there's also this auxiliary control beside it to operate the unit with wet hands or with gloves on. We'll have a look around the whole cockpit again from this end. We can see once again just how big this space is. So now let's go down below to the glorious woodwork and really see all the space that you could imagine. So here we are in the salon of this Halberg Rasty 62. And from the first time I saw this boat, and, and it's really the same thing as every Halberg Rasty that I've come across, the quality of the woodwork is just, I don't even know the word. It's, it's, it's so warm and comfortable and homey. And I mentioned that this has all been covered up since it was new. So all of these finishes just look they're, like they're just out of the factory. You probably can't see it on the video, but they're all s silky smooth, um, beautiful. Just the amount of shine that they intended from the factory with a satin finish is such a comfortable spot. Now upstairs in the boat or on deck on the boat, the theme that we kept going back to was the scale of things. Downstairs on the boat, the thing that you've got to pay attention to, or, or you, sorry, you can't miss, is this idea of storage. So there's storage here, storage here, storage here, storage here, storage underneath all of the banquettes, storage under the opposite seats, storage here. Uh, uh, liquor cabinet here, storage here, storage here, storage here, storage here, storage here, storage here. Storage here. Sorry about the gimbal. Storage here. here. It's just, I find it bewildering the number of places that you can keep things aboard the boat. Um, as a skipper of my own vessel, I particularly like this nav station. The boat is coming with all of the cruising guides you could ever want. Everything from the Baltic Sea to the Southern Atlantic to the South Pacific, all of the Caribbean cruising guides you'd ever want. I think those are all the Doyle guides. Chris Doyle did a great job putting them together over the years. But over here we've got this satellite phone, the SSB, and another satellite communicator. Oh, sorry, that's the, that's the, the Raymarine remote control a massive big 12 and 24 volt uh, switch panel, electric controls. This is the 17 inch Garmin, the same as upstairs. I guess I can just press the button and switch it on for you. The one upstairs is a, is a 20 or a 21 and this is a 17, so it's a massive big uh, plotter for inside. This is a bespoke, uh, PC on the boat and it's mainly well it's, it's a PC that can be used for anything including your Excel and your Microsoft Word but it's got the full suite of controls for the Mastervolt system and the Mastervolt uh, system is completely comprehensive you'll see on this list here if you can see it on the video that you can get into the gran uh, to granular detail on all of the batteries all of the AC DC converters all of the inverters all of the chargers are all all the parameters are all controllable from this one PC for a nerdy boat owner like me, it's a pretty impressive uh, uh, bit of a detail. 
down here we've got our AIS, down here we've got uh, at the original GPS, which now is kind of a redundant backup. Uh, this is the big fully featured VHF. Um, just features and features. It's as though the owner on this boat, no expense was spared um, for installing everything you could ever want for journeying. Um, even though the boat was uh, kept really at the dock for the first eight years of its life, it's only been a journeying boat for the last seven. The other thing that the previous owner of the boat did was bought kind of every spare you could possibly imagine. And I guess we'll get to a little bit of that shortly. So when we talked about storage, and here's more storage down here. Storage underneath the floor here, storage here, storage here, storage here. But this brings us to the galley. And as a cook, I have to say, I really admire this galley. We've got so much food prep space in this. I live on a catamaran and this kitchen is way bigger than my kitchen. We've got a day fridge. We've got a refrigerator. Over in this corner over here, we've got a freezer. We've got all the storage you could possibly want for all of your things, rivaling really most home kitchens for storage, storage in the back of the cabinets here against the hall for plates and cups and what have you. Well, here's the dishwashing station, Nescafe coffee maker, as well as a French press, French presses, the way I make coffee and the way I prefer. But this space to be able to work is just fantastic. Nice big spice rack up here, more storage up here. Just so much room. Little small microwave over in the corner over here. Storage, storage, storage everywhere. Next thing we come to in this boat is this master suite. And this is an absolutely gorgeous space to live. It's got a very large and comfortable bed. And again, storage everywhere in this room. Nice light, beautiful woodwork. In the corner over there, there's another uh, Garmin chart plotter that's uh, not only for navigation. If you were lying in bed and you're wondering what uh, whoever's on shift is, is up to, you can see on that. But it's also hooked up to all of the cameras that are on the boat, so you can see the outside of the boat while you're, uh, while you're at anchor. You can make sure you're secure. And there's a Raymarine repeater for the Raymarine instruments up here as well. Storage, storage. See the air conditioning vents. It's worth mentioning that this boat has for it's got air conditioning throughout but there's one in this room the services this room alone that you can run on battery so you can run it uh, in the evening or in the night on the batteries on the boat it's got a quite a large battery capacity so you can cool off this room and close the door and, and uh, be comfortable just in this room if you don't have guests i think most of these boats are really boats that are run by couples large bathroom separate shower a big roomy shower as well as a Fellow of a certain stature, I appreciate having a shower that's big enough to be able to move around in and turn around in without having to press your elbows in against your chest. A big sink, quite a large mirror over here, and of course more storage, and of course the electric head. One last thing to mention while we're in the master suite. If we look in this cabinet here, and you can see it better maybe in the pictures, those still photos, that's two discrete Raymarine autopilot controllers tied to two discrete uh, uh, hydraulic rams to run the steering. So you've got completely redundant autopilots on this vessel. And then one thing, as I was taking the photos, I closed this door and I noticed this is a really good example. And I hope you can see it on video of just how beautiful the finish is on these vessels. I can't imagine how many coats of varnish has been sprayed to get this depth of finish. And it's the, just this beautiful satin finish that I find so warm and uh, inviting. Before we go forward and look at the forward spaces of the boat, there's one more thing to look at. And that's this remarkable engine room in this vessel. It's like opening Aladdin's cave, but uh, for me to get in, because I'm a big guy, I'm going to pause the camera for a minute and I'm going to shoot from uh, over there by the generator. So please hang on just a moment. There are so many systems and sophisticated systems in a vessel this large that I'm just going to go through and I hope I get them all right and that I remember them all. But 
Over here we have a bunch of controls including the solenoid for switching the water maker. This will send water to the tanks rather than overboard when the uh, sensor reaches a particular TDS level, uh, uh, salt level or, or contaminants level in the water. Hydraulic tankage up there. Here is the pretty interesting and sophisticated drive system. Uh, uh, the steering wheel turns gearing inside of this which turns this shaft on these U-joints which goes to this turning gear here which goes to these U-joints which goes to that U-joint to another set of turning gear goes aft in the boat and then goes to a Lumar Mamba drive which turns large turns of the steering wheel of the vessel into small turns on the rudder stock. This is one of two hydraulic pumps. One is here and one is under there. We've got uh, water maker electronics here. We've got climate electronics over here and then we'll start swinging over here. This is pretty interesting. The size of the exhaust pipes for the main uh, main engine. Great big water lift muffler up here and this goes, my knees are at about uh, water level in the boat and so this goes about six feet in the air to go to this turnaround to keep the uh, to keep the uh, the water from the exhaust well 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 or the turnaround for the exhaust well 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 above the water line. Up here we've got an 80 liter electric and engine driven hot water tank, all of the water in the world for all the hot showers you ever wanted. Uh, this is some filtration for the fresh water system. This is the great big um, AC driven pump for, the, it's a cat pump over there, the regular cat pump like you see in so many of them, AC driven for the water maker. This vessel has two water tanks and each of them have their own pump and their own accumulator tank. So not only is it fully redundant like so many things in the vessel, but with a huge big accumulator tank in that, you'd never get any sense of anything but like, you know, regular water pressure like you'd be accustomed to in a home. We've got uh, part of the water lift muffler for the generator here. Way, way, way up here, we've got a couple of Victron controllers for the solar. And here are a pair of, uh, uh, I gotta step even a little bit further back. Here are a pair of combis. This is inverter and charger combination uh, for powering the boat. And between all three of them, it's, uh, well, these are chargers at 100 amps and they're inverters at 3,500 amps each, and then they stack. So I think you've got 7,000 watts of, uh, of power by the time you get to 220. Um, and if that's not enough charging, over here you've got yet another charger that can be kicked in for another 80 amps of charging if you really, for some reason, need to get the batteries caught up. Over here you've got a massive, massive bilge pump, and this is kind of like one of those Edson or Whale uh, hand-driven diaphragm pumps, but it's actually driven by an electric motor with a, with a piston on it, which is something I've never seen before, but it's actually pretty cool. And then another feature that I think is pretty cool is right here is a little manual pump system that you can draw from any of the tanks that are down below in the boat and you can use it for taking out water from the bottom of the tank or any schmoo that happens to be in the bottom of the tank. You can drain it through this little hose here and just make sure your diesel's as clean as you want it to be. And there is the uh, this sort of sea chest for the main engine and here is the uh, distribu power distribution system that goes with the master volt set up on this. Over here we have three uh, Raycors two set up for the main engine, which are switchable with this thing, uh, the lever here. You can switch between them while underway, or if you have a problem, you can switch and go and then take your time with changing the f filter. And then one more for the generator. And over here, we've got filters for uh, uh, the input side of the water maker. That's a, 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 a carbon filter and a pleated filter. So that uh, treats the inside, the incoming water. And then here, we have a 225 horsepower Perkins turbo diesel, diesel rather, with less than 2,500 hours on it. So this is uh, this is still a fairly fresh engine. And finally, I guess the last thing in here, we have a 12 kVA Whisper Quiet Master Volt generator package here, and it's got. Um, I'll maybe put a card on the video, but I believe if I remember right, it's got 2,000 hours. So this is a pretty remarkable engine room. Everything so beautifully laid out. Um, everything tidy, everything sensible, and to be able to stand up beside the engine and work on it is uh, really, really a treat. So now we'll go forward and uh, have a look at that those forward spaces. Well, here's the last section of the boat to video, and that's all these forward cabins. 
Uh, first off, I guess we'll mention that we've taken out the, the carpet from this little bit of the flooring so you can see the condition of uh, the floors. They're like brand new because they've been covered with carpet since the boat came out of the factory. They are literally as though out of the factory. They're shiny and glossy and there's not a scratch to be seen. Uh, if you look in the photographs, you'll see that we've opened up this floor for the photographs and this bilge is stuffed with spares, pumps and clamps and electrical and tools and that part of the floor is also full of um, belts and engine bits and it's the same all through the boat. The spares that have been included in the boat are, it's, it's almost kind of, well, it's almost kind of funny how much stuff has come with the boat, but that's not what we're here for. So over to port, we've got a beautiful double stateroom. Again, the theme here is storage. Got a beautiful locker here, a set of drawers here. More closed lockers around on this side. Another big, beautiful, and brand new and fresh. They must use very high quality mirrors even on these vessels because there's no degradation of the silvering or anything on the mirror. So they must have used a very high quality material. But again, oh, sorry, this is the, uh, this is the doorway that takes you into the forward head off of this room, so it's an ensuite. That head is shared among uh, this cabin and the, uh, the forward cabin and the set of pilot berths that are beside. So again, storage, 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 storage. There's storage under the bed, and there's this big, huge locker here. There's both a couple of ports in the side as well as this hatch that's devoted to this room. So the room breathes very, very well. And again, you're looking in behind the doors where they never see any action and all these finishes are just beautiful. Uh, as a, I love making things out of wood and this just impresses the heck out of me. So moving back outside, we've got two of what could be called pilot berths. Got a double down below for uh, one large person, two small person, or easy, a couple of grandchildren, a single up top, and they're big and thick and very comfortable looking beds as well. And again, more storage under here. This is my favorite locker on the whole boat. This is kind of the elf locker where you keep, uh, I don't know, but it looks like an elf house to me. And uh, this room also gets a beautiful dressing area. More lockers again here drawers for this section, hanging locker for this section, more storage out, out at the hull, more storage out at the hull, storage for the bottom bunk down here, little locker or cubby area down here. Very workable space. As we move through, we come to this sort of ante room and this gets us into the forward head, which is to port. And it's another large, very airy, quite bright, lovely space, electric head, great big vanity space to lay, lay out your toothbrush and all of your shaving stuff, more storage below, more storage in at the hull, devoted side port on the cabin top, and again, a hatch up overhead for lots and lots of uh, airflow in this space. So in the shower, we'll close off with shower doors in order to give you a dry head. Beautiful big, uh, Teak grate on the floor of this uh, head as well. So we'll continue the tour, close the bathroom. Turning around, I guess I've got to step back just a little bit to be able to show you this. Opposite this head, we've got a beautiful Bosch washing machine, and this is one with some real proper capacity. It's a pretty good big machine. And we've got storage for your laundry supplies, a little folding space or set down space and more locker space below. And obviously, like everywhere, there's another access to the bilges here. And now turning around one more time. Sorry to make you sick, but there's only so much space to move. So here we get to the forward cabin. And this is also large, airy, again, beautiful woodwork. The ceiling treatment on the side walls here is just gorgeous. Uh, soft satin finish, polished up. Uh, here we have another hanging locker down low, locker out at the side, lockers against the hull, 
lockers against the headboard, lockers against the hull. And as we move back a little bit and come over here, another locker here and another locker here, another locker against the hull, and another storage underneath this seat here. The theme of this boat is storage. And it's got this massive, massive, massive hatch that's fully 26, 28 inches across this big hatch to let in tons of light and tons of air. But again, we can uh, mention that it does have a sunbrella cover on it and it's kept the sun out of this room all of this time. So all the woodwork is just as though it left the factory. Which is up the tour of this Hallberg Rassi 62. She's a beautiful vessel, and I guess if I've been effusive, you'll forgive me, but I just think the thing is absolutely remarkable. And I can very easily see myself living aboard this huge and comfortable, extremely well-appointed, extremely smart vessel. So we can talk about elegance, we can talk about style, we can talk about performance, and most of all, with a big halberd grassy like this, we can talk about safety for you, your family, your friends, your guests, anybody that comes aboard. This is a vessel, really, that can take you anywhere in the world that you want to go in comfort and, wow, some style. Thanks very much for watching all of this.